guys, let me give you a small introduction to phases. I know that you probably know what is a phase and a change of phase, but let me just review it so you may have maybe an extra information. And if not, it helps you to review the topic. In thermodynamics, we're especially uh, interested in either solid, liquid, or gas. More commonly, liquid and gas interaction, but of course, solid liquid is as important as well, depending on the application. Plasma and other phases are not within the scope of the course. So if you were uh, willing to work with high energy particles in astrophysics or something like that, well, we are not going to see that in this course. So let's do the solid phase. I bring you this picture. So you have a lot of cars, it's, they are all near and they cannot move there. Let's say they have no free space at these molecules. You can see they uh, move a little bit, they vibrate, they rotate, but their movement is limited. Uh, they do not flow, so that's why they are not fluid. They resist a lot to the change of shape. For example, you have a rock, you know that they don't change with the atmosphere, air or so. Uh, they have a fixed molecular structure in general, such as a cube or something like that, or center in the face. You're going to see that later in chemistry, if you haven't seen that before. Internal energy is, by definition, lower than that of liquid, which makes a lot of sense because you know that internal uh, energy is a function of temperature. And since the liquid must be in a higher temperature, well, then it must have a, let's say, a same pressures, if the pressure is constant, you are almost sure that the internal energy of a liquid is higher than that of the solid. And we're going to see later about entropy, but I think it's a good idea you start uh, understanding that the entropy is the lowest in the solid. Some examples are metals such as gold, silver, nickel, titanium, minerals, uh, whatever mineral, for example, iron minerals and for example, whatever is nickel minerals, that they come maybe CO2 or SO4, etc. Ceramics, like glass or pyrex, glass, etc. Polymers, in general, they are solids because they are long, very long, polyethylene or polyester, etc. And I give you this example for water, which will be ice. Now, liquid, I bring a little bit. Mm, more fluid highway, but you can see that there are many cars. So even though they move relatively at high speeds, you cannot move that freely. And you can see it here in this picture. They move a little bit more, they have more space. They might even rotate more, translate more, and vibrate a little bit more than the solid, but they have still a confined container structure. Since it flows, we can call it a fluid. And we'll see later that Fluids are either liquid or gases. They have a low compressibility, I would say almost zero. But of course they have a certain compressibility. You can compress and take out these spaces here. They have less resistance to change of shape. So you know that you have a glass, it will take the glass. If you have a teapot, it will become the teapot. Uh, the intermolecular interactions are the ones that keep them near. So this one here, they have still interaction between each other and that's why they uh, don't go out or evaporate. They have this special concept, which is only in liquid, which is the superficial tension phenomena. Indeed. Because this is the last, let's say, the last atoms that ha are having contact with air, they have a special or different way and it's called supertension. They have less internal energy than gases, but they have more internal energy than solids. And once again, entropy is a little bit more than that of the solid, but way less than that of the, the gas. Some examples, water, uh, acetone, probably you know it, uh, alcohol, and liquid mercury. Of course, you know if you're at 25 Celsius degrees, you're going to have liquid mercury. And last but not least, and actually it's very important, is the gas phase. I bring you this highway, you can see that they are pretty free to move around. 
And as you can see, they can rotate whatever they want, they can translate whatever they want, and they can vibrate all they want. Once again, this is a fluid because they can flow. It's a, a lot of compressible compared to the liquid. Actually, it's super compressible. When you increase pressure, the volume will decrease. And it has no resist, uh, resistance to shape almost at all. So if you place a container which is like this or a container like this, it will take the shape of the container completely because by law, the gas will take all the container shape. They have a notable separation between molecules, or as you see in this example, between cars. And they, what's uh, okay, ready that. They have a low intermolecular force interaction. So they, since they are so far, so far away, they don't interact that much if you compare them with solid or liquids. And this phase has the highest internal energy, of course, because you know, internal energy is a function of temperature, and gas is almost at high temperatures and entropy entropy you will see later that is the level of chaos and of course you can see here they are flowing and going everywhere that means a lot of chaos and means a lot of entropy uh, some examples are this one here oxygen gas which can be found in tanks or if you are sick probably you know the oxygen mask noble gases such as xenon, argon, neon, krypton etc water vapor such as these geysers here you have water vapor or natural gas which in this case are being burned but natural gas is almost invisible to the site what's up guys it's me chemical engineering guy so if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.